All right, welcome to episode four, I think it is, of Have a Go with Corey Vlachiki. Next guest, Jake Farragher, um, local boy in Penrith. He's an investor, businessman, entrepreneur, would you say? <laughs> yeah. No? No? A bit shy. Um, had a couple of fights as well in the cage, boxing. He's co founder of Nutrition Station, the franchise. He's got a couple of investments going at the moment. Um, business partners in a couple cafes, one yep. that's on the horizon as well. Um, yeah, so we're just going to dive into a little bit about his history with there, how he, how he got started and all the ups and downs along the way. So tell us a bit about yourself, Jake. Uh, eight, 31. 31? Um, yeah. 32? Um, 32, coming on 32. Um, so I'll have one of those COVID birthday parties. When's um, that? At, uh, a month, a uh, little under a month, June second. Sneaky underground party, or yeah, what? I might, I might have a few uh, venues we can have one. <laughs> um, been in business since I was at school, probably before school. Um, learned a lot along the way. Um, Did you say business before school? I was a business. I had my first business when I was at school. Um, doing, doing what? We had nose plugs, so we used to sell them to the kiking community that I was a part of. Um, I used to make them in my pop in my shed, um, and then I ended up getting them. Imp- I was importing them from China when I was, I think, sixteen or yeah, seventeen. Right. Yeah. So, how'd that go? That business? Oh, I, I, I built it, and then I lost interest, like everything. So, <laughs> um, I had, a, I had a, a big order. I had a six thousand dollar order, and I was, oh, I'd been seventeen and um, spent all the money in a week. So, <laughs> just dumb shit. So, so um, that was you and your pops. Your just me, like me and me mate. Yeah, you and me mate. mate. Yeah. So was it nose plugs? We used to like, yeah. So we used to buy, used to buy them for twenty bucks each. His other company, and they were um, they always break all the time. So I worked out how to make them. They're just a bit of wire and this plastic stuff, a bit of rope, and they're more making them for like five bucks and selling them for ten, so half the price of the other other guys that made them. And then um, we um, we started getting them imported from China. It cost us fifty cents, and we're still selling them for ten bucks. Oh yeah, um, yeah. So. Oh, China, school. mate. Make yeah. everything over there. Yeah. So your last names, mm. like if you live in Penrith, everyone knows your last name. Not because um, of me. Not because of you, <laughs> mate. Because <laughs> of your old man. So John, uh, your, your old man had a footy accident, was it 1978, it said. Yep. And he ended up being a quadriplegic. Yep. Um, so he's, like everyone knows about him, knows his story, like growing up. Um, especially in like the sport, the sporting world in Penrith. Yeah. Um, he now works at Panthers. Has um, pretty much since his accident. Yeah. 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 What's his role there? Uh, he wasn't the door for a lot of years. Um, and now he's more just PR, just rolls around and talks to people and makes sure the just old ladies are playing bingo. And <laughs> 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 keeping everyone honest. Yeah. He's so he had a was he- head, it of, harass- head also- of harassment. So. Right? <laughs> head of harassment. He gets and harasses everyone. Yeah. He's um. What was it in a scrum, wasn't it? Mm. They packed into a scrum and yeah, they yeah. fell on top of him. Dad was a tight head prop, I think, I think a loose head prop growing up. He's only he's young, too. How old was he? 21. It was his seventh game. So he was come from the bush. Um, I, don't, I might get the story wrong, but I think he came down, um, played a reserve grade trial and then ended up playing first grade, like in the trials. And then I think he played the first seven games. Um, and yeah, he was used to playing loose head prop out in the bush. And I think back then front rowers debuted a lot older. So obviously he wasn't developed. Um, and he just went in tight head prop and the scrum collapsed and, um, yeah, changed his life at 21. So, oh, so young too, eh? Yeah. Especially young kid from the bush. Yeah. Crazy. Tough on everyone and more to probably obviously tough on him. Like your whole life's changed and turns upside down in a, in a matter of seconds. So. Yeah, I was reading, um, a little article on him earlier on and he was saying that you're where he, he was told he was never going to be able to have kids yeah. and that was like a massive blow to him like that yeah. was what he was looking forward to so yeah. a little miracle <laughs> a miracle baby yeah i don't know about that i think yeah i think when he had the accident he um that was on the on the sterler park he said the biggest thing that hit him he says he could, he could hack not walking again but then the doctor said there's a real slim chance he'd ever have kids again and pretty much like you're never going to have them. Um, and I am I am not adopted. I know that because the size of my head. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, he um, he had me uh, 10 years after he had his accident with my mum, obviously. Um, so, yeah, he was um, 
is lucky enough to have me. Um, and yeah. Are you the only child? Uh, so I've got a brother and sister, yeah. um, older brother and sister to my mum. Um, yeah. We've we just got different dads. Um, but to dad, I'm, I'm his only child. Yeah. Spoiled so. one then? Always, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's what I was reading actually on the Sterlo interview. Yeah. Um, what was like? What was his thoughts on you when you because you played footy like under twenties and that didn't you? Is that right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. 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 So what was his like? You playing footy? Is a bit nervous about that? Yeah, Dad was always tough on me when it came to the footy. Like, um, I, I played footy until I was sixteen, and then I went and kayaked for, for probably four years, and then I came back to footy and said oh, I want to play twenty. Um, and he was like, "Well, you're gonna play. You gotta play hard." And Dad was always pretty like, "You gotta, you know, you gotta put the work in." And, I wasn't much. I was really fit. I wasn't much of a footballer, um, but he obviously was worried. But he he he's always had the attitude that I could go get hit by a bus. So like yeah. he preferred let me do something I love. than he hates fighting, but I don't know why. Um, football's probably more dangerous. But he um, he never really had a problem with me playing footy. Obviously, he didn't like it, but he never stopped me doing anything. Yeah, um, he's been very good like that. So. so you mentioned fighting there as well. We've had a couple. Oh yeah. <laughs> Were you in the cage and boxing or just, just in cage, the cage? Just yeah, just got MMA fight. So. How many of them you had? Two. Two Win. and oh, so I might retire now. <laughs> Two up? <laughs> Two and oh. Didn't you have another one coming up? Uh, I was meant to have a boxing fight coming up. Boxing fight. Up. Yeah, right. but um, obviously with this all happening, I, it's on the back burner for now. Put on a couple of pounds, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, like, did you notice anything different like about your dad growing up did you like notice that there was a difference between your dad and the other dad just because he was yeah. a quadriplegic like yeah was it evident or was there like things that well, obviously it's evident because you can see it but yeah did it like it affect you growing up or anything like your mindset uh, i i think it gave me a greater sense of resilience and i, I get to see every day what resilience is i get to watch him get up at five thirty a carer's come in, they get him out of bed, he puts a suit on, he's never late to work. And I guess I see that in my own dad and I have seen it since I was little. And then I look at people that work for me and they can't even turn up on time or they, I just, I, I just don't put up with bullshit, you know what I mean? Like I'm like, well, I can see a man get up and do this every day and never miss, like never, never have a day off work. And it probably gave me a greater sense of resilience. Um, and, and I also probably um, people that can deal with adversity, like it gave me another, as I got older, like when you're young, you obviously it's it's different, you know. But I never, I, I always like fight with my dad, and people say something. You can't say that he's in a wheelchair. I go, <laughs> say whatever I want. He's my, I don't care if he's in a wheelchair. Like I, he's my dad, and he treats me that. And like we've got a real open relationship with that. Um, but I think it's given me, a, like, a given me. I've been very blessed to have that as a as a, like a like, like a, a shining light to to look up to and see what what real men are about. You know what I mean? Because he's he's done a lot for me. He's given me every opportunity. You know, he's um he's been, yeah, the best example of, a, of what a man should be in my life. You know what I mean? So I'm very lucky. Um, and, and, yeah, sure, of course it's different. Like, he's never chucked the footy to me ever in my life. But yeah. I think the, the good outweighs the bad yeah. 100% on that. So That's good, man. Yeah. Really good. Like, I noticed, like, we were talking just before the podcast, like, Jake's not a very open person. Like, yeah. this is the first podcast he's ever done. And, um like you've seen that on your social media is you've got posts of like you and your old man there like that's yeah. probably the most evident thing on there to be honest yeah. like there's always a couple of little heartfelt posts on there <laughs> you and the old man yeah. so um with your your business life or you you know you're like your investor you open up got plenty of businesses and has your dad been a massive impact on the way you go about your life as well like from learning like that building that resilience and everything does does, is that ever in the back of your mind? Do you think you get some attributes from that that have definitely helped you with your with your life so far in For terms sure. of the business side? Yeah, I, I think it teaches you that. I think like those traits or that like example of how you have to be when things get hard is what I've applied that to a lot of things um, and just like held my breath and waited till it comes good. Um, and like I would have given up a lot of times if I didn't have that. Um, that influence or that example of what what it's like to to hold on um but um does has dad encouraged me in business if, if it was dad's way i'd be it would be working for panthers or working for a, yeah. a corporate as a doctor or like i couldn't be a doctor i'm not smart enough <laughs> but like in sales for a car i don't think i went to uni or at school uni like when it comes to business dad's not for it um i think now he kind of finally 
accepts that I, I took a different path, but dad liked the conventional, like school, uni. Um, and he, and he, I was very lucky. He, um, he, he put me through tutoring when I was young. Um, so like I was, I used to go to school seven days a week for whole year 11 and 12 and I was dumb as a doorpost, but I, I was lucky enough to go go in there Friday, Thursday night, come home, go to school Friday, go in, tutored all weekend, come home Sunday night and dad would get his carer to come and pick me up with him, take me home, go to school again. And it didn't teach, like I went to uni, I tried twice and failed. Um, but what the, it taught me at school when I got my HSC is like real strong discipline. Like I was real, like, no, nah, like, cause I wanted to go. And then he, like he, he obviously took me and it just showed me like anything, you can have anything if you just work hard. And I got a half decent mark, you know what I mean? So I was very What'd lucky. Got? I got 84. I would have got the asterisks if I didn't go to tutoring, you know, the below 30. Um, but yeah, I got 84, which was, you know, um, I used to have this old bloke that used to tutor me. He was a real smart man. He was um, Steve, Norm Bowers, his name was. He passed away not too long ago, a few years ago. And um, he was real strict. Like, he'd go, you got 26 minutes for lunch. Yeah, that's it. So you, the first time I went there, I went, I, I, said, he's, I think he's, uh, I was a year 11, obviously cocky. And he, I'll go out and I come back. I, I was for half an hour, right? I get back to the door, he locks the door on me. <laughs> Fuck. I was, it's the middle of winter. I'm standing in the middle of Kent Street going, what do I do here? What school did you go to? I went to McCarthy. Yeah, um, and then from then on, I end up like being friends. I used to put his bets on at these like eighty, and then we became mates. He give me half hour for lunch every time. <laughs> so good. What did you struggle with at school? Like, what was your your biggest factor there? Oh, p- probably learning the way everyone else learned. You know, like reading, like just conventional learning. I didn't, I didn't, um, I wasn't good at it. Like, and I'm the first to admit it. Like take this book read it and come back memorize it come back and be able to regurgitate in a test i I just learned differently from that you know i love uh i I got like top marks in in the school in design technology i got general maths like top marks but like just things that i could i I understood i was good at things i didn't understand i was terrible at like and i just think we all get put in this box and it's like you're gonna learn this way you know, and whereas now, like the world's changing so far, you want to learn anything, just jump online. You can learn anything you want. You can read about any topic. You can, you know, I just think I never understood the conventional ways of learning. And, you know, that's why I probably didn't go to uni and, and failed at uni twice. So. Yeah, that's what, well, me and me, mate, were talking about this the other day that, what you, exactly what you said, you get put into this category and it's like mm. all the sheep, you know, fall in line. Yeah. It's like a herd mentality. Yeah. This is how you're supposed to learn. This is what you're supposed to do. Like there's no, I don't reckon they, um, you know, push creative thinking enough or yeah. like making people think for themselves. Yeah. I think there's a good school out there called Monsanto. Have you ever heard of them? No, I haven't. Where they do something a bit different. Like they still fall under like, um, like a normal education system, but the, the way they go about it's a bit different. Yeah. Like they in, find what you're good at. So you're a good artist. All yeah. right, we're going to encourage you to, you know, go down that path. So they let the little kids decide, even when they're young, like, I want to draw, or I like being outside. So they encourage that a bit more. Um, I don't know too much about like the finer details, but, um, yeah, I reckon education system, there's got to be a bit of a change. Like, it's, 100%. It doesn't yeah. work for everyone. Like, I was the same. I fucking, I hated school. Yeah, and look, you've got your own business. You're yeah. going well, like. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. even what you said there, like, you you got so much information. Obviously, you got to have a filter on and see where the source is coming from. You just jump yeah. on a Google or YouTube. Like, yeah. I learned how to set this podcast up by watching YouTube videos. Yeah. Like, so, like, there's that much information out there. Like, one of the one of the coaches in here actually was talking about. Do you want to do this uni course for four years? And I said, Yeah, look, by all means, do it. But why are you doing it? Mm. Like, you could probably go learn that. Just go open up the business yeah. and learn how to do it on the run. Yeah. I think that's the best way to do it. 100%. Save you money too, yeah. paying off all that debt for yeah. how long? 100%. What did you do at uni? Oh, I studied marketing um, the first time. Um, <laughs> Was that prior to social media? Prior, yeah. yeah. So, so that's full change now. My mate Josh Green rang me one day. He goes, where are you? I said, I'm at home. Why? He goes, you coming to this exam? I was like, what exam? <laughs> I couldn't even read the time. I had no idea about the timetables. And I didn't know there was such thing as lectures and tutorials. I just thought there was only lectures. So I never went to any of the tutorials. Like, I was just <laughs> terrible. And then uh, I, tried, I tried a second time. I went and did uh, workplace health and safety. And I 
Yeah, didn't do that. Didn't finish that either. So. What was your first job out of school? On, oh, I've had like like casual jobs here and there. Um, we preferred my first job where I've gone for an interview and like got a job was two years ago. I worked at Macca's. I went and got a job at McDonald's Richmond. And um, Two years ago? Yeah, two and a half years ago, yeah. yeah. And what was the reason behind that? Uh, our food at NU was way too slow and it took a chef that I had employed for me at one of my stores, 45 minutes to make a chicken wrap. And I said, I'd never sell another store until I learned how to cook myself. So I went and got a job at Macca's and worked out how the, the good ones do it. So yeah, It's like best system in the world, really, the best, isn't it? yeah. And I learned, like, I, I only end up doing 10 shifts, but just the way they do things is just phenomenal. Like, everything's colour-coded. Did they know you were from... So for people that don't know new the new cafe, it's called yeah. New Cafe now, isn't it? Nutrition yeah, Station. Yeah, it's Nutrition Station still, yeah. yeah. It's back to that, yeah bit of a mistake we changed it but oh he went back, back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly yeah. Working for. <laughs> yeah so nutrition station just jump on a google it'll pop up um so what's nutrition station do uh we do we've got cafes we've got 20 cafes across the country um yeah. east coast we do health food um and we do new meals we do a lot of online ordering and um like a mixture between you, you know, it's like if you blended a coffee club and new foods and put them together that's us but we're like low rent sites and um we do all healthy food you can create your own meal you can have your own smoothie um yeah all, all healthy food so we're one of the first in the country to do it and we're a lot of competitors are coming in and out of the space and we're probably still um us and olivers are probably the largest in that space still so do you feel like what i notice you guys is never i guess what's it called um like, it doesn't look like you ever just plateau, like you're just staying on the same line. Yeah. Every time there's something new popping up, like yeah. a new meal, a new way you're doing this. Yeah. Like it seems like you're always innovating. Yeah, I'm very lucky. My um, The guys I got work for, my little cousin Josh, he's extremely intelligent. Um, and the other guys there, um, we've been lucky to spend a lot of our money on our technology and innovation, and we've done that for a lot of years. Um and I guess that's what's allowed us to take lower rent sites and not be in Westfields or, you know, the larger rent um, locations. So, um, yeah, it's, we've had a lot of, like, that business has been very hard for a lot of years, like ups and downs. And Is it just because the industry, like the food the, industry? The food industry's hard, yeah. 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 Everyone's ideas are want to open a cafe. And um, I've owned the North Penrith one for f- nearly five years now. Um, and um, that's it, 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 it's good if you work hard and you want to be in it. But everyone's oh, I want to open it. Everyone's open a gym. Everyone's to open a cafe. You know, because yeah. it's it's easy entry. But then once you get into it, you've got to actually work hard. Yeah, it's a big grind. That's what separates the men from the boys. You know, so. Um, but but some of our mistakes, some 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 mistakes are ours. We launch products too quick or change menus, and you know we're not we're not not to blame on things or. Um, you know, but um, I think the industry, the industry, hospitality industry as a whole will have a huge shake up after the coronavirus, just the way that the government set up the the cost structure in that industry. I think there has to be an inquiry, into, not an inquiry, but like a, a look into the labour and look into the rents of the landlords and there's got to be a, a big shake up or that industry won't exist. Just yeah. can't do it. You can't pay a 16 year old 38.50 an hour to run at a coffee on a Sunday. Yeah. Because um, you're not going to pay $12 for that coffee. You yeah, know, exactly. so you just, it needs to change. Otherwise, that industry won't exist anymore. So, what are what are the bigger problems that you see with that in hospitality? Yeah, um, I think labour laws are increasing. Um, rents ratchet. So, if you are like a cafe locally that we own, um, they ratchet every year five percent, and oh, five percent that's not much, but every every year compounds. So, by the end of the lease term, it's double what you started and some. Um, landlords make a lot of money um, out of us and. Um, I think more so the labour laws. I think you've got um, an industry which employs so many people. Um, the Australian workforce, uh, like, it's not a privilege to have a job. It's like, it's your privilege to have them working for you. Yeah. So you're paying kids, like, min- like huge wages to work on weekends. So, what, so it's 38 50, Plus it? and some, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, there's like, Should've the industry as a whole, and, and, and a bit like GST, so example, like we sell you this beer for $5. Um, we only ever collect four fifty. so 50 cents goes to the government. We want to like, say this, a coffee or whatnot, 50 cents goes to the government. So we're already behind 10% and then your labour's too high for the industry and then um, your cost of goods is, and if you're good, your cost of goods can run at 30%. A lot of cafes, they don't, they don't manage, monitor their costs like we do. So they'll, they'll be running at 50% and they'll find out the figures at the end of the quarter and then they realize they've lost money the whole quarter. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, 
it's a tough industry unless if you're not um, like pretty uh, on your costs all the time. Um, you've got to monitor them fortnightly at, at, at least. Does the does your cost like say your food costs and that does that fluctuate too? V- very yeah. like. So that's another thing you got to huge. Yeah, take there's so many variable there. costs in this industry. It's not like I guess this. It's memberships, less less wages, less rent, less any fixed overhead like utilities and whatnot. So that's all you got to watch. We've got to watch whether the chef's sending out something that's double the size on a plate. Our food cost can go from thirty percent to sixty percent. Now you factor in rent at ten, labour at thirty five. Um, GST at 10, you're behind the eight ball. So that's how a lot of hospitality businesses go broke because they don't monitor their costs. They don't, like Phil from Percy's is very good at monitoring costs weekly. Like he's, he's great at um, obviously customer service and, you know, all those things. Everyone knows what yeah, Phil's like. Yeah, he's a legend, like. legend but so per- Percy Plunkett's another cafe that, are you partners? Yeah, with? yeah, I'm partners with Phil in that. But he, he's really good now at managing costs and making sure that our labour's in check and making sure that our food costs are, are checked weekly. Um, and, and I had a conversation where I was like, we can, we can be the nicest guys in the world and, and, and be great to everyone, but if we're not making money, it doesn't work, you know, because no one gets employed. And I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in, like, um, you, have to, you have to be lean and you have to make decisions in, in business and make sure things are, are, are strict, otherwise you can't employ people, you know. And I think hospitality is such a, a big um, employer of the country. I think there needs to be, people need to look at it. Not, not saying I want to pay anyone less, they're saying they need to look at that structure, like whether it goes to like an American model where it's tipping or, you know, customers or there's, there's a charge that customers take up on weekends. It's like a like a, a cost plus on weekends where you pay a, a levy to cover the um, the, the, the um, penalty rates. You know, I think that there's people people just won't pay more, you yeah. know, and it just doesn't stack sometimes, you know. Yeah, well, like so, even like coffees, what's, what's like a coffee, about five bucks or something? Yeah, 380, Yeah, you know. So like you don't how how like like you said you can't be paying ten you can't, twelve bucks gonna, for a coffee. You know, it's not gonna it's maybe not gonna in happen. Bondi. Yeah, <laughs> Bondi. Huh? But do you think like you're very good with your numbers? Like mm. I noticed there, you're just like ten percent, thirty percent. Yeah. Is that one of the most important things you right, probably the most business? important. I the think, most important in any business. Yeah. Yeah. I think people these days is a lot of. You said at the start, entrepreneur. I hate the word. I think that. Um, Everyone it's a cool thinks, word, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's Every, so cool. Yeah, like, 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 I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, just it's a business owner. Exactly. And I don't think it's like it's like I, I always say. To, I, say I think it's like if I if I come down and said, "Oh, what are you? I'm a hero," I'd be like, "What the fuck? Are you, you can't call yourself a hero." That's the same how that that word has to be used in that sense. Like, you cannot call yourself, <laughs> and it's either your peers can call you it, or or, or that's it. You like, can't you, label you yourself. You can't lay lay on yourself like, "Oh, I'm a hero." Like, nah, <laughs> no, 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 no. I hate that. Um, but yeah, n- numbers is the most important thing, I think. Um, and high, like everyone thinks it's like brand and marketing and this. No, no, no. It's it's all and and like there is there is there is situations in big business where you're going for growth and you're just going for like, like to 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 secure a market and it's all about growth. It's but with what we do, like I think me and you, it's all about numbers. It's all about making sure that you're making a profit. Um, otherwise, don't be in it. Go get a job. It's yeah. way easier, you know. Yeah, there's this misconception I think, whereas. The money will come. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We're a lot. Like, I've had this conversation heaps of times. They're like, oh, you know, you just hope say us in a gym industry, just open the doors, do your training, mm. people love it, the money will come. Yeah. So, like, I wasn't a numbers guy, or Luke's not a numbers guy either, my business partner. And, like, we sort of just learn on the run. Like, I came and spoke to you. We were looking at franchising a couple yep. of years ago. That's how we first met through a mutual friend. Um, but yeah, like there's a misconception of like that's a that's sort of like a charity like a charity model. Yeah. Just open yeah. the doors and see what happens. Yeah, you got to get your numbers right. That's something that we weren't, um, I guess, didn't didn't hit the nail on the head with that when we first opened. Yeah, there's obviously a lot of a lot of different other factors, but I've learnt now over the last few years that it's definitely all about numbers. Yeah. Obviously, you want to provide the best service and product and, like, yeah. you know, employ really good people, which we're really lucky with. And I, you guys as well at the, at the cafes there, like, your service and that there is awesome. Yeah. Like, which I Thanks. noticed as well. Even, the young, like, the young kids at that nutrition station. Yeah. Like, even though they're young, they're so friendly in that as well. Yeah. yeah. Do, what's good. your – like, I always say um, when we're doing an interview, like, for a new coach, sorry, for a new coach, like – we hire good people. Yep. I don't give a fuck if you're a bad personal trainer. Like yep. anyone, 100%. Can become, like 
yeah. you've got to be a decent yeah. person at the end of the yeah. day. And I've done, I think we've been open for maybe three and a half, three and a half years. Yeah. So I've done nearly 90 interviews. And it's yeah, not well, like these people are like they're bad people, but they're just, yeah. Like it's very hard to find good people, I think. Yeah. yeah. Like, how, how do you go about that? Like, what's your criteria? Do you have a, what you look for when you're hiring someone? But I'm probably exactly the same as you. I hire the person. Yeah, you know, like, like, we can teach them. Obviously, everyone's um, competent in what they can do, um, or they wouldn't be there in the first place. And people can pull the wool over your eyes. Um, but but my bi- my biggest thing, which I probably have learnt from experience, um, is you hire the person. Um, exactly what you said. Um, but also never hire someone that pops up out of nowhere without a job. Is it, has that burnt you in the past? many times? Yeah. Like, and I, I look at it back at it now and I'm like, oh, hold on a sec. So do you mean they're unemployed at the time? And they just pop up and especially in my industry, like food, like, um, like franchising, they just pop up and they're this like self-proclaimed expert on like, I don't know, I'm not going to name a topic, I don't want to throw it under the bus, but um, you'd be like, oh, they, they, they know everything, you know, but there's a reason why they don't have a job. There's a reason why they're out of work. The really good ones, if you want some specialised role that's, you know, that, that you really need someone for, I don't know, for, for anything, like for site procurement or for, for accounting or for that, you got to go and seek them out of somewhere else, you know. Um, you either get a consultant, like uh, I've got, I'm very blessed, I've got a very good solicitor who's my best, one of my best mates and I've got a very good accountant um, who's been brilliant and taught me that financial discipline. Um, but they're, they're services that you pay for, but from an employee, like for that pop-up, I don't know, you got to be real careful because um, there's a reason why they don't have a job. The really good people are already in jobs, you know. Very good point. I like that. Yeah. So don't poach any trainers. Though. <laughs> so with um, mate, it's it's so hard to find. I think in our industry, ever since Biggest Loser hit, everyone thinks that they're going to be a personal trainer yeah. and fifteen hundred dollars a week yeah. and be the next Instagram famous yeah. person. Like, it's not like if you if you want to be a good person to train, like anyone can go on Google and get a workout. Like, it's so easy. Yeah. You got to know the ins and outs of the business. Yeah. Like they think fifteen hundred dollars in your pocket straight away. Yeah. I don't think of all the costs that go towards yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, it's like the biggest thing: a personal trainer or coaches, whatever you want to call yourself, it's accountability. Mm. That's the number one job for any personal trainer or coach. Yeah. Is keeping that person accountable. They're giving you money yeah. to, for a result. All right. Well, we're going to hold you accountable towards that. Yeah. I think that's a massive misconception. It's like oh. I can show them people how to do a fucking burpee backflip, yeah. but yeah. well, good for you. Like, <laughs> yeah. No one gives a fuck about <laughs> yeah. that shit. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So you got we've we've touched on nutrition station, Percy Plunkett yep. Cafe. You've got another. Um, is it a? Would you call it a cafe? What would you call it? Ah, uh, it's a. Uh, oh, it's down the river um, near the coffee. It's well, it's so it's a it's a cafe. It's, uh, certainly, it's a restaurant. Um, that's the front house. Um, it's a gonna have a bakery uh, in there, so like a, f- a fully operating bakery. Gonna have um, a big um, animal yard, so like uh, farm animals, cows, chickens, goats, llamas. We even had a little farm management plant. Llama, I think, I think, I think they called llamas. <laughs> um, it's gonna have a huge kids playground, so it's like a like a facility for that. We wanted to build something. Or, or it, was, it was actually feels like he. he um, he he rang me 10 times this one week and was going, come down, come down. And I'm like, mate, we're not doing another one because Percy's was, was a big build. Like, And um, obviously my, I want to concentrate on you. On and you, that's like my my, my, my main um, my main focus. And uh, and he, he's like, come down, have a look, come down, have a look. So I end up going, I, I, fuck, I'll just go down. I went and had a look. And he just starts telling me his vision for the site. And I was like, yeah, I didn't have to, like, I was like, yeah, let's do it. And then I, I said, if, if you're going to do this, you need to get a, you need to get a Terry, who's my other mate, who's been very successful in hospitality. He's never, never. You need um, to get a Terry. He needs to get a Terry. And he's like, <laughs> he's, he didn't know Terry, and, and so I, I rang Terry. I said, you need to come in this project because um, Terry, Terry's like, you know, feels really like passionate and really like um, mad people, really person. people. Like he just can, yeah. he can, he, he, and, and it's genuine. Like yeah. he can, it's he's not putting it on. He like, seems he's like he's the, like I don't know him well. Just for for you, I met him a couple of times yeah. and be like grabbing coffees and a feed down at Percy's, but he seems like like. The, that person in the he room, is, or yeah, yeah. in the world that no one would hate. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and that and, and that's that's being consistent, and, and everyone knows that. But then I was like, "You need a Terry." And it's like, "Who's Terry?" I said, "He's my mate." That's like, 
really good with numbers, really good with like making sure shit ha like happens. Like he's never had, he's, he's opened, I think probably 10 cafes since he was 18. He's, he'd be 33 or 34, maybe, maybe a bit older. Um, and every cafe he's got, he sold for double, triple what he bought it for. So he just knows the industry. And I was like, you need to get a Terry because this project's like, if, if we're trying to do it ourselves, we, we won't be able to do it. And I, I, I'm only a small part of that. They, they put me in, they put me in to get the deal together and um, get, obviously to help get it through council. We've got a really good architect working on it. Um, again, the same guy that did Percy's, he's brilliant. Um, so yeah, I put the deal together, but these two guys will deliver something, and obviously myself and uh, will we'll deliver something to Penrith that Penrith deserves. Um, yeah, it's going to be a special place. Yeah. Was did you call it the concept or whatever? You we haven't got a name yet. We're fighting over that at the moment. Fighting so. over that. <laughs> over the name. Any, any names? Toss it up. because uh, it was an old. It's on um, like down. If anyone or well, people in Penrith listen to this, but people that aren't in Penrith. So down on the Payne River, it's down where the coffee club and yeah. sort of that. There's a bit of a new site, isn't it? There's a big fence up there now. Yeah. It's some renders on there. It's, um, it, was it an orange? Orange orchard, orange yeah. Orange orchard, yeah. Yeah. So they want to call it the Orange Fields, um, which I'm not a fan of, but um, I'll probably lose this one. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't care about names. I'm not a, I don't think the names. What, what's, your, what's your... What's your name for it well i can't really talk i don't have any oh, don't have any. i don't know I, I want to call it the farm but that's just the byron bay one because i've been yeah, there so well, many times and you, you can't rip them off so yeah well that's i remember um film i said it was, it was like the grounds at alexandria yeah. or the farm and he goes no everyone keeps saying yeah. that it's not like that not but like i keep going we call it the farm yeah. let's just call it the farm but like, like, you can't it's got, and i understand i understand that lot like you know we're creating something new and it, and it is very different like the the the, the architects like I've, I've seen the plans and it's special like it's it's something that um people will be able to go there and spend three four hours and you know literally go from the cafe to the bakery to the roast coffee roastery to you know they can have their wedding there uh down the track and there's a there's a hundred orange trees in there um so it's it's a special place and you and you would have driven past the block a hundred times and not realized how special yeah, I had, it is i had no idea yeah. i had no idea all that stuff was there yeah um that's pretty like exciting times in that like your industry, like the food industry. I reckon in Penrith, there's yeah. a couple of like places popping up here and there. Yeah, which yeah. is good. It's about time. Hundred like, percent. Don't have to leave now to get get a good I food agree. or a drink. Yeah, I think for too long Penrith's been institutionalised. Like, um, it's all based on the back of post machine revenue and. There's money out here. Hundred like, yeah. percent. Yeah, like people have turned their back on Penrith and, and never invested. And you got like Alan Grammer, Henry Mark, Depot. Then we came along, you know, and like I don't, I don't want to leave anyone out, but um, there's like a scene change, and now everyone's going. Oh, there's people actually can spend uh, out here, and they want to. They want good things. The people of Penrith, like it's an area that we're real proud of, you know. Um, so it's good to. To invest back in it and and um you provide i, I always say panda could have another 10 emu halls they could have another 10 yeah. henry because the people they just want good things you know and all that's going to happen there'll be a shake up to the bottom 20 percent. you know it's not going to compete with us and like we, we we want 10 other really good cafes to come to penra you know so yeah that's that's funny you say that I always people go oh there's another gym opening up another yeah. gym i'm like look that's good 100 like, percent. at yeah. least people are going out and getting fit you know yeah. what i mean like yeah there's a misconception it's like oh you don't want that competitor like the guys across the road g3 doing yeah. really good things yeah um you got like the f45s there's heaps of there's crossfit on every yeah. corner just about so yeah. there's like a vision personal trainer like oh there's so many in a vicinity i'm like yeah but the rate of obese i think we're number one in the world australia yeah. for it so there's not yeah. enough gyms it's yeah. like yeah like more people should be training yeah so and people try and control the uncontrollables Corey. like people always think oh i've got to stop the comp no you just need yeah. to get better like it's not like just get better at your, you can only control what you do yeah you know and if if you're worried about competition all the time you're paranoid about what's going on around you well you're gonna sink like it's done you and know, all your focus gets all your focus goes on there it should be not, exactly yeah you know yeah well that's like yeah like oh, another cafe's opener but yeah. it's, that's a good way to think of it like the yeah. good will make everything better 100%. and the shit ones will just yeah. fall off by the yeah. wayside. Yeah. And you just hope you're not in that bottom 20% yeah. <laughs> if you are, you're, you're going anyway, you know. So. Um, so, like you said, proud Penrith. Next Very. little business you got going. I'm not sure if you're by yourself or you got a couple other people with you. Is it Drink West? Oh, I'm... Uh, so, 
that's main main is Ty and Tyson. Um, the the, Tyson Pedro and Tyson Ty Pedro and Ty Tyson. Yeah, so we were wrestling fighters. one day, and um, we finished just before Ty. I think when Ty fought uh, in Melbourne, and we were, we were wrestling before he's like in his camp, and like we should do a beer. Yeah, let's do a beer. <laughs> and then, like within a week, I, I took it. I got three other people involved, which I knew would be. Um, very beneficial to that business is I, I got Ben Carter, Pat Silk, and Pat and um, Phil who own Simple Media and James Crow, all guys that I knew had their own certain skill set, and then I own a bit of it. So it's, it's, it was literally a joke at the start, and then Ty and Tyson obviously started promoting, it and everyone wants it. Like we've sold out of um, of beer online, like, and it was like a four week wait. So people are literally wanting to buy this thing just because it's sold out. Sold out. Yeah, sold out of cartons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So on, like, it, it's pretty. Um, I think people are now proud of the West. Like you couldn't have done this ten years ago, but now there's like this like bit of like a, an attitude change. Like, no, nah, I am from Western Sydney, and I like I reckon, I'm proud uh, of it. I reckon Ty's got a big like role in that. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, Ty Tuivasa, like he yeah. played like speaking pig like <laughs> and all that stuff. Drinking and out of shoe. yeah. <laughs> Like he created um, like even Mount. What is it? The FTA. The yeah. Yeah. What is it, Oz Tag or yeah. Touch Footy yeah. in Mount Druitt, like yeah. helping out the kids there and that? But that, that, 100%, man. Yeah. yeah Those so boys I, I reckon him. he's had a massive thing, like, yeah, Western yeah. Sydney, like yeah. that. Everyone's like walking around FTA shirts yeah. and stuff. It's good. I love it. You know, I don't agree with everything he says or he's <laughs> <laughs> about the swearing he does, but he knows that. Like, I'm not, you know, but he's. um. It's good. He's just, he's being. He's who himself. He is. Yeah. Hundred, and that, that's what you like. And that's why people love him, I yeah. reckon. Even yeah. if he does drop the yeah. C bomb and. Yeah. And I said to the boys, I was talking the other day, I was like, there's, we're, we're, I think the beer's in a good spot because there's not many people in Western Sydney that have the capacity or the opportunity right now to be world famous. You know, then they, they, those guys are, people know them from around the world, you know, and if they can continue their careers, which I, I like, I know Ty's doing a lot of work overseas and, and, uh, and Ty's is um, out of injury, but he'll be back soon. And I just think we're lucky to have them on board as, as, as shareholders and, and obviously owners of the beer. Because they will they will lead the way with it, and then we'll just do the, the stuff in the background, you yeah. know. Um, and we're not we're not out to you know get anyone. We just want to make a mad beer from Western Sydney, like so. What um good colours too, same as our colours. Yeah, black and gold. Black we and copied you. <laughs> <laughs> what uh what's that industry look like? The alcohol industry? No idea. No idea. No, nah, we just, just sort of like a, and just having a crack. Yeah, just so. having a crack, having yeah. a go. Yeah. Same as the podcast, having yeah. a go, have a crack, mate. Um. What about any other investments that you've uh, jumped on board? Yeah, I've got a few um, a few other things that I've done. Um, I can't talk about a couple of them, but... Um, you can't? One's a competitor of yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can talk about that one. But, um, you can talk about them as well. Yeah, I invested in, in another gym concept um, and uh, well, probably a year ago. You can tell uh, them, it, you can say who it is. Yeah, G3. Yeah, G3, um, yeah. yeah. So they got three for it? Choice? three yeah, yeah yeah um coming i think they've got a few more coming but all i did was help them franchise it um i don't get involved you know i think i'd never i've done it once i didn't getting like the kind of matt matt and challenge and i really smart um i just think that industry um the big one in your industry um has made a lot of money for a lot for a long time and i think there's going to be a shake up i yeah. think concepts like yours and theirs are different and that's why they'll work and that's why they'll erode a lot of the competition out there so um, they do they do like circuits as well but yeah. they use a lot of machines so a lot of machines basically yeah. all strength they've got a couple of hit things in there yeah, yeah. so a similar similar concept to what we do they're, they're, but they're, yeah they've got a lot of machines yeah. they're doing they seem like they're doing really good they've got uh, what St Mary's St Mary's uh, Windsor. Windsor another one coming in Stanhope um, and then another one that's about to sign up but obviously this changes everything so um, yeah. but yeah Matt came to me and said I want a franchise in business I said yeah I can have a look at it um, and looked at the numbers and then obviously it started with that and then I went, okay, well, I think you can. I got him audited. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and they're, they're, they're just, they're passionate. Matt's a smart guy. I've known Matt for a long time, um, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll help anyone, but it all starts with, you know, does it work? Does it stack? Yeah, it was stacks. Well, then let's do it, you know. Um, I'm involved in a couple other things, but... What about any of the, any investments that didn't work? Oh, plenty. I had seven hat shops when I was... Hat? 22 had Hat Kingdom. We started that with me mates and that tanked when we were 22. I opened seven stores in Westfields. That was a nightmare. Were they those little, like, in the middle yeah, of the... Yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah. was that you? Was yeah, that? that was me, yeah, when I was young. Um, oh, mate, I've, I've, I've had plenty of... Plenty of name, name a couple that people might know about. 
Oh, not not so much business. I'm more, more lessons with business where I've I've could I've, I was pretty close to the wire. You know what I mean? Um, I think any business like the old grow too quick that got me once. Um, hired, hired a, another time I hired a big management team. Um, and right before we expected to grow, and this was a few years ago, we, we hired we had the right people in the right seats, and then the growth didn't come. And then I always say after that I was very lucky. A mutual friend of my sister's in Hong Kong is a helped us out a lot um, and invested in the business. He taught me how to, um, anyone can manage a business when it's going up, but it's it's being able to hold it when it's going down, you know, and cutting costs along the way. As we were anticipating all this growth, we had everyone ready to go. And then we looked and we got, we're not growing, you know, so we had all these wages and all these costs factored in. And then it's like, oh shit, we've got to adjust it, you know? So we, we held it and we basically cut at the right time to hold it. And how do you adjust? I just cut just had to be ruthless in cutting and um, and get things to a point where we could afford to keep running out of, out of cash flow, you know, and not out of investment or not keep putting our money in. Because, like, uh, I think capital becomes, like, like finance becomes a drug, and if you're just f- funding your business on finance, it'll, it'll soon run out. So we, in that period, we cut aggressively. I had um, a lot of people help me to get it to a point where we needed just the bare minimum of staff, and then we've grown, we've, we've grown since then and become more profitable um, since then. Um, but it taught me how to hold onto a business that's gone the other way because a lot of people just shit the bed. They keep their costs high, their revenue goes down, and then they're, they're toast, you know what I mean? But you've got to be able to hold on uh, when it's going the other way. And, and it's very hard to do that when you, you've you anticipated this growth and you're, told, you're not told everyone, you told yourself that it's going to go like that and it doesn't go like that. And it's like kind of an ego check, but also a um, like a, it's, it's demoralizing as you're cutting and you're making, you oh, you got to get it. Down. But then when you get down there, you go, oh, it's not that bad. You know what I mean? So, Do you enjoy that part of it? Like the the challenges? I, know I love you, it. Yeah. You mentioned like putting out fires. That's what you're missing at the moment. 100%. With this COVID, yeah. COVID-19, putting out fires every day. That's what I think. Um, I think that's what uh, makes me who I am. I just, I, I love sorting problems out. You know, I, I um, not that I go look for problems at all, but um, I think I operate at my best when my back's against the wall. You know what I mean? And, um, if I'm not, if, like I've, I've almost gone insane over the last seven weeks sitting at home, you know, because obviously dad, I have to be cautious um, and do my right thing by him to stay home. And then, you know, you, like there's not much you can do at home besides ring people and annoy them. So, <laughs> what um, what I was going to ask you next next was in terms of when you're going to look to invest, yep. in a business or what's the criteria that you like your checkbox, all right, well, they tick in this. You mentioned numbers. Yep. What else? So we'll always, um, if we're investing in an existing business, um, I've got my investment group, so I've got, a, I'm, I'm very lucky to have a lot of, uh, I won't call them older people, but people that are almost, I think I'm, all of them would be double my age in that group. Um, I've got two accountants. I've got guys that own an international um hospitality but international like big big international business so we run everything run, gets run by them and the board and I, i'm a director of that um, investment group um, but the main thing that we look at is obviously we always start with the financials if, it, if it's an existing business um, because too many people get carried away in like ideas and um, you know marketing plans and all yeah. it's, it's all about the, the, the bottom line not the bottom like it can, it, it can be okay to be not making money that's all right but what's your revenue, and then what, where your costs are, where are your costs coming from? Like you, you can always strip costs out pretty easy to make profit. Um, so it always starts with the numbers, and then and then the second to that is the people. You know, it's it's numbers, and probably probably numbers just in front of people. And I'm not saying like numbers are more important than people. Purely investment strategy, it needs to stack financially. You know, and then the people will make the numbers work. The people are, are more important as a whole than the numbers. They don't mean shit so you hate in the people end. Is what you're you know? <laughs> 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 no, numbers don't mean shit, but it's, <laughs> but it's, it's not as you said before. It's not charity. Like you, you're doing it. To, you're doing business because there's way there's way funner things to spend your money on than to be gone not being able to go home and sleep at night. You know, because yeah. I've had plenty of nights like that. You know, and like people get carried away in like, oh, it's alright, we're not making money, but it's going to be good down the road. It's like it's not. Like, right. You gotta be real with yourself, you know. So you gotta you gotta sort of be able to look a few steps ahead. Mm. Yeah, and think differently. Like, you know, um, it's and, and it is okay to lose money for a time as long as you know how long that's gonna be. You know, so. So anyone that's looking to franchise, say their business, say, let's say a cafe, another cafe. Yeah. 
or any business in general, what's the first few steps they should take? What would you be looking at? Uh, get your numbers, make sure the, po- the, the model's profitable and it's scalable. So um, you need to make sure that obviously this, if it was here, you make sure you could check the numbers, do due diligence on the numbers, make sure that they stack, do a bank rec, make sure the numbers are real. Um, and then you um, just make sure that the model's scalable and that you can teach someone else to do it. You know what I mean? That's the most important thing. So like systemizing System, everything. Yeah, and that comes with time. Systems change, systems adapt. Um, yeah, it'd be that. And then it'd be putting a good marketing plan behind um, growing that model. Um, and then, yeah, fr- franchising is pretty easy if the model's profitable and good. You know, like as long as the as long as long the, the model um, can be, re- everything can be replicated, but you can, you, can act, you can teach someone else how to do it the way you do it. Because the minute you give your brand to someone else, they can fuck it pretty quick, you know what I mean? They can start selling donuts out of the fridge or they can start, oh no, we don't, we don't do training like that, we do it our way. You know, so you need to make sure that there's good legal documentation in place to make sure they do do that. And that's like the last port of call, but before that's good systems and good training, so training people how to do it properly. Um, and then once you've done all that, then you obviously have a watertight agreement to make sure if they don't do it that way, you can take it back off them. Um, because when, as your franchise and as you grow, um, I've had many stories where I walk into a shop and, they will be selling donuts. And I mean, what the fuck? Are you? Like, That's actually you, happened? I, it's, I've had way worse than that. I've had, yeah, people selling all sorts. I've deep fry going there. They've got a deep fryer at the back. <laughs> I swear on my life. A nutrition a station. Store, I walked into a store one time and I had, fuck, these are good chips. And I was sweet potatoes. They were the best sweet potatoes I've ever had in my life. And I went out the back and there's a deep fryer there. I said, we didn't put that anywhere in the fit. He's like, oh, but they taste better. I'm like, <laughs> buy a McDonald's, real. mate. <laughs> like, like, yes, yeah, we've, we've seen it all. There's not much we haven't seen, so. Um, yeah. Industry, like, what's the biggest blessing you've learned? Like, what's that? What's, it's hard. What's the what's like the hard? Oh, that it's hard. It is hard. It's a hard thing because you're dealing with people. Is um, it the people aspect? Yeah, I've got a lot. I'm very lucky. I've got, I've got a lot of good relationships with the franchisees. I'm very hands on, especially in the new. Um, fran- franchising is good um, if you do it right. You know, and you do the right thing by people. Um, I think. Um, the, the industry as a whole, it's hard to make people follow the way you and consistently follow the way you do it. And the best thing I did was I, put, I appointed um, Pete, my general manager, and I knew. Um, so Pete was Pete came worked for me as a chef. Um, he then uh, started working in the office, and now he runs the whole brand. Um, he does a ten times better job than I did. I'm too um, like right, I, have, I have good relationships with everyone, whereas Pete's just a great manager. Um, and he gets the best out of him. He makes sure that the rules are followed. He makes sure that he checks up on them. He's consistent. As, exactly what you said before about being um, uh, making people accountable. He's very good at that. And the best thing I ever did was put Pete in place. Um, and now NU's is getting more and more consistent. Like I guarantee there have been no deep fries out there. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's probably just yeah, getting that level of consistency is the hardest thing in franchising. Um, All right, another question. Got someone right sending out the drink. Uh, when are you sending out the drink? West Rings and merch. Oh, no, no. I don't know who that was. Must have been one of your mates. Probably George, uh, Brendan McDonald. Yeah. There was actually another one saying, "Would you would you have a fight with Tyson Pedro?" Uh, You've done training not, with him, haven't you? Me. I've trained with him. Yeah, yeah. I've sparred Tyson um, a couple of times. Um, yeah, I wouldn't. Would I ever fight him in like properly? Yeah, like, yeah jump in the ring and have like say a boxing match. No, <laughs> no I'm I'm a uh, I'm a uh, I That's do it for fun. That's not what you said off camera. <laughs> you reckon you'd at him? I oh bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I'm, I'm I do it for the fun of it. Like I'm like a social golfer on Saturday, so I enjoy to I enjoy fighting in the cage because I think it's it's very peaceful. Um, I think it's one of the only things in life now, um, or one of the things left that I can do that um, you get caught out real quick if you fake it. You know, I think a lot of people fake shit these days and they they get out there and they, they show a picture of a fryer in Instagram and it's on lease or they show, you know, their Grolex but they don't own it, it's their mate. So, and beyond that, beyond material things, just like, oh, I own this great big business and I'm so happy. And it, you put yourself in a cage with another man, you can't fake that. It's so raw and it's it's such a peaceful opportunity. But I'm not a thug. I don't, I'll never go fight in the street. I'm not into that, you know. I just think that sports, I, I, I like it because it's, it's so raw and it's so real and you, it teaches you a lot about yourself but would I fight Tyson Pedro in the cage absolutely not I've sparred him and I've, he knocked me out twice um, in, 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 in I think we did eight rounds he knocked me out in the third round and the fourth round he's a very good fighter and he, he'll be he'll be uh, 
He'll be he'll be world champ one day. Yeah, I reckon. 100% yeah, he's, believe it. he looks the goods, eh? He is. Yeah. There's a couple of bad knee injuries and yeah. two ACLs in a row. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which would be tough on him, but um, I've trained with him and we, we we train a lot together and um, we're pretty sick. Like we're running that. Like he, he can push himself pretty far, um, and that's what I that's why I like to, you know, when I'm fit, I like to get into it like have that. Have a go. So, yeah, it's good. It's good. You so. can do something, have a crack, eh? Yeah. yeah it's all. I've just been doing the last, I don't know, six months, a bit of boxing and trainer. Yeah. And I've yeah. always played team sports. Yeah. Like, growing up, footy, obviously. And exactly what you said, like, there's, there's it's so honest, boxing. Yeah. Or, like, yeah. when it's a one-on-one -on -one fight, whatever yeah. martial arts it is, it's yeah. just this like, pure honesty, right? Yeah. Like you said, there's no hiding. No. You can't just go, oh, I'm going to sit back because I've got to be teammates there. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah it's a, I've only sparred like and not I've probably sparred at 70% max yeah. I think yeah. but even that I'm like fuck it's like yeah. it's such a different feeling like 100%. it's it's weird yeah. it's hard to explain unless yeah. you do it it makes I, it real it's, it's, it's on like, it, it, we're getting punched in the face yeah, yeah. Like, I love that like I'm weird like I, lo I love sparring like I love I me and Jack Heather if we spar all the time like yeah he reckons you to... only put up videos when you're flogging him hey <laughs> tell him to ring me I've got plenty more of them <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's yeah, it's something I don't know, something weird about it, but it's it's mm. definitely a good feeling. Yeah, as long as you don't get knocked out all the time. Yeah. Um, best advice for someone that say someone that wants to start a business or just have a, have a go at something. What's the best advice? Uh probably the first thing I say is do it. Um, uh, just go go and start it. Um, second thing I'd say would be listen to people. I've been very lucky to. My dad taught me you got two ears and one mouth, so go and find people that have ever done it before or a lot a lot of business people that are successful will tell you everything if you ask them you know people don't realize that they think that everyone's guarded with their secrets but if you're young and you genuinely want to have a go um i've i've been very lucky to go and like have have a lot of older people around me that i can just go and shoot like pull my heart out about things or problems and just like literally just go and ask for help and be like people are there to help you you know and and the other thing is i just think a, a, a big thing is just remain private like people think in business don't do podcasts pardon don't do no podcasts. not this not this at all no 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 no, 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 no. this I, I don't mean this i just think um a lot of people um think that they're a pop star when they're in business and they think that they're like just because they're in a business they can oh i'm flying around australia i'm doing this i'm doing that and i think when shit gets hard um you it's not so much um uh, it, it's it's more for you as an individual like if you if you're always telling everyone you're doing so well and, and everything's great and you're, you're flying when shit goes bad because it will go bad there's there's going to be a point in business when shit goes bad. You don't want everyone to think that you're here, and then when you when you, when you then have this self realization, I'm I'm actually here. You got to bring yourself back down to that level. You know what I mean? So I guess just remain like a bit a bit under the radar and realize that it's a business. It's not like you're not a Hollywood actor. Like um, just do business. You know. Um, so remain like humble and grounded. Yeah, type yeah. Thing, yeah. But this is great because you're you're like I think this is really good. You know, like you get. I was there. just joking, mate. Sorry. Yeah, telling people like <laughs> giving people advice and. Yeah, um, I just think like getting people's story out there. Like, but I'll, I'll touch back on what you said about asking people. Yeah. Like, I think. A lot of people won't do that because they're scared of being rejected. Yeah. But who like just send someone a message? That's what I did to you. I'm like, hey, I'm Blake. It was Blake Blackburn Bear? Some yeah. bears, mate. He just gave me a number. He's sweet. Catch up coffee. I got a couple of questions. Yeah. You could have just said, no, mate. Got no time. Or it's sweet. Yeah. Like, don't be scared. Just go yeah. ask someone. Yeah. Like, you'd, you'd be surprised how many people are willing to, like you said, give yeah. you advice. Yeah. Like, that, sorry, you go. Yeah. That that's the reason. Like exactly what you said. Why I wanted to do this is get people like yourself on. Yeah. Um, people that are just going to have a go like hopefully someone listens to this and starts a business yeah. or yeah. you know sends you a message and harasses you <laughs> <laughs> I always do it yeah, yeah. so it's like I, I think that's a, just like exactly what you said just get up and have a fucking crack at it like, yeah. it doesn't work doesn't work who cares and the thing is like people are too hard on you especially in Australia like if it does fail you know, when it does go to shit, people are like, oh, I did he, he went broke. Like, it's like, yeah, but he had a go. Like, get off his back. Like, what are they done? Yeah, exactly. Oh, you've worked, you know, like, I just think we, we need to be more um, accepting of people that jump into business. And, and, and I'm saying do the right thing. Like, sometimes things don't work. You know, not if you're going to rip anyone off or done that. But if you, if you get into the business and it doesn't work, people need to be able to do that and need to be able to do it again and jump up and go again. You know what I mean? So I think... Um, but you can you can save a lot of that pain and heartache by going and dropping the ego and just asking people what to do. You know, yeah. people will help you. Yeah. Don't be scared of hearing no. No. Um, anything else? 
<laughs> next flight coming up, right? Something? No, I don't know yet. <laughs> okay. Got any other business plans or in the future that you're going to be doing? Nothing? Um, you want to talk no, about? not really, man. Just um, locked under key contract. Yeah, got a few things that are happening in the background, which will, which will Always come Always do. <laughs> yeah. Always got something going on. Keep don't it you? quiet. So, yeah. Quiet chat. Yeah. Uh, good, man. Thanks for jumping on. No Legend. worries at all. Thank you.